Al, let's get into segment number two. I'm talking about the conference. We got a big weekend ahead for the ACC Coastal coming up the last two weeks of the year. Kenny Pickett had a great game, three touchdowns as Pitt, Pitt beats UNC in overtime. You've seen it there on the screen. My first question for you, even though North Carolina lost another close one, another overtime game there, loss <laughs> for the Tar Heels, even mm-hmm. though they did, my first question for you is, is Sam Howell – the ACC Freshman of the Year. He's got 29 total touch passing touchdowns, and that's better right now, at least, than Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, absolutely. I think you'd have to give him strong consideration for sure. He's had a he's had a great season. Uh, I don't think a lot of people were quite expecting him to be this good. Uh, obviously, he was an FSU decommitment, I believe, uh, and kind of flipped over to UNC and, heck, gave Clemson a run for, his, for their money. He's, he's great on the deep ball, has good touch on the deep ball. Uh, he connects with a lot of those passes, right? and he's just uh, – He's just really poised for a freshman quarterback. He hadn't really showed the jitters that a lot of them, a lot of them show, especially in their first year. It's kind of a, a new theme with fre- with freshmen. I, th- I think you see a lot of them getting more and more ready, you know, sooner and sooner. Uh, a lot of them are playing early on in their careers, and uh, you know, he's no different. He's done a great job uh, for kind of a, a UNC program who's trying to to rebuild a little bit. So I think uh, they're definitely on the right track, and uh, I w- I would definitely vote for him. He would get mine for sure. Yeah, same for me, too. I think Sam Howell's doing a great job. A guy that Clemson recruited actively, too. So definitely a top-level recruit there for the Tar Heels. And Mac Brown has done a great job turning that program around. Sky's the limit for them. Uh, something that I kind of talked about earlier this morning with someone was my concern. And I know I'm going off script here for you. But my concern for <laughs> my concern for the paying players for their likeness You know, you're going to have to worry about what businesses care about your brand as a football team. And there's already deep roots with Jordan in uh, Chapel Hill. And there's already deep roots in Under Armour in Maryland and, and Nike in Oregon. My concern is that if they're paid for their likeness, what's to say Michael Jordan doesn't come in there and say, hey, every elite player gets a commercial for for Jordan if you if you sign with the Tar Heels. Now I know there's a lot to work out with that and I don't think that they're going to allow that. I hope they don't because what's what's Clemson going to do? Um Fleur, BMW, yeah. Prisma Health. I I don't know what <laughs> Clemson's going to do locally. Now I know there's some some big time money in Ipte for sure. Yeah. But when it comes to advertising ability you got to think the Tar Heels, the, the the Maryland's, the Under Armors, the Nikes, Oregon of the world. That kind of scares me in a way because they they've got they've got family ties there, they've got legacy ties there into that school, and it would make an unfair advantage for those schools if they're paid for those advertisements. I, I didn't know. I know. I know. We kind of went off script, but did you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> I don't have too many thoughts on it because this is something I cannot stand. You know, we talked about this a long time ago. I'm not a big fan of the paying players for their likeness. Uh, I think they, I think they get, have enough in their package as far as you know, getting the getting the scholarships and getting the health care and all that kind of stuff and the stipend and and meals and everything like that. I don't think they need to be doing this. I think it complicates things to a level that nobody is prepared to handle right off the bat. Uh, I think things are complicated enough as it is. You always see, you know, impermissible benefits and teams getting in trouble for things like that. This is just going to magnify that times a thousand. I mean, if you, you kind of give them an inch, they take a yard, you know, they're going to offer, say you can give a player 10,000 up to $10,000 or whatever they, you know, some arbitrary number and somebody's going to try to give them 20, you know, it's just going to work that way. It's not, it's, it's indifferent. It's, it's unfair from state to state, obviously with higher cost of livings in certain state. Are you going to adjust for that? Are you not going to adjust for that? Uh, you know, because players are going to have to think about, and obviously the the coaches and the recruiters are going to have to sell that as well. Hey, I understand at Ohio State they're giving you twenty grand, we're only giving you ten here at Clemson, but you know, uh, a cheeseburger costs ten dollars as opposed to twenty up at Ohio State. You know, come on, uh, I think it's nonsense. I'm I'm really against it, and I wish they wouldn't have kind of opened this can of worms. But like I, we said, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, once you open this can of worms, you're never going to be able to get them back in. So uh, I'm just kind of kind of anxious and honestly a little concerned about where this uh, where this thing's headed. Especially those teams over next to Hollywood. I mean, you look at Southern California, what's to say that they don't have some sort of deal with those studios there and say, hey, you come to S- Southern Cal, 
you can get into a movie trailer or something. Hey, I mean, hey, or you can be, uh, you know, something like that. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of sticky for sure. And I hope that they work it out. I think it's going to take a lot more than just one year to figure it out. I think they have since till 2023 before that that law comes into effect in California. So they got to figure something out that's going to be universal that works for everyone. I like Dabo's idea of saying that wait and hold on to the money until you graduate or until you until you get drafted or something like sure. that. So at least there's some sort of future thing to look forward to instead of just showing up, maybe having one good year and then banking your million and walking away. You know, we don't want we don't real want really that because then that that kind of ruins the college culture for sure. Yeah. But moving on from that, talking about the ACC as a whole, the Coastal Division is still up for grabs with just two games left. Virginia Tech destroys Georgia Tech, which I believe is something that we predicted. Uh, it was a five point, I think a five point spread. They Georgia Tech had played Virginia close the, the the week before at Virginia, but we both had saw that Virginia Tech was kind of in their championship phase. Man, they're laying it on. I think they've won like three or four in a row now. Virginia Tech yeah. uh, beat Wake Forest, big team there, thirty eight to seventeen. Then turn around and destroy Georgia Tech. They've got to play Virginia at the last game of the season. But the big game this week, and we're going to talk about our predictions in segment number three, the big game this week is uh, against Pittsburgh. And I think that's going to be a tough one because I saw Pittsburgh just squeak out one against UNC, which we know the Tar Heels are a good team, even though they don't have a good necessarily record. But that's going to be a big battle there. I was kind of trying to crunch the numbers over on Twitter today, and you can probably see what I what I came up with. But if, if Pittsburgh beats Virginia Tech – and then Pittsburgh loses to Boston College, the last game of the season. But then Virginia Tech beats Virginia. Okay. They all end up with four losses, and they all end up, all three of them end up with only two coastal losses. So they're like four and two in the coastal with four overall losses, and they all have at least one loss to each other. So it, it like who goes to that? Well, then the tiebreaker I think goes to what their non-conference record is, and I think they all have one non-conference loss. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to be some sort of crazy tiebreaker if that happens. Yeah. Um, but the way that it won't happen is Virginia still just wins out. They got to play Liberty, beat them, and they got to play uh, Virginia Tech at home. Thankfully for Virginia. But it's definitely going to be kind of a, a, a controversial, maybe not a controversial, but, a, but a, a, a fight for the finish, if you will, for those top three spots up in the Coastal. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I made fun of the Hokies early and often this season, okay? I mean, and with good reason, really. You know, they had close games against Old Dominion, uh, Furman. Uh, they were demolished by Duke. As a matter of fact, they didn't even really have a dominating performance against Delaware. You know, so they, <laughs> they have not been a real good team. However, you know, uh, Hinton Hooker got his first start against Miami. And uh, since that game, they've only got one loss, and that was that one-point defeat at Notre Dame. Uh, so once they kind of made him their starting quarterback and stuck with him, they've done really good. You know, they actually, if you saw, they snuck into the AP poll at 25, uh, and they still control their own destiny in the Coastal. Like you said, all they have to do is win the next two weeks uh, playing against Pitt, and then they have to go to Virginia. Obviously, that's a tough game, you know, Virginia. But they've won. I don't know how many games they've won in a row, but they, they kill Virginia almost all the time. Even though Virginia's kind of thought of to be the better team and they have them at home, it's going to be a tough one. But the Hokies uh, are looking really good. They're playing. They're playing good football right now. And I think you kind of got to. Honestly, I'm. I'm kind of leaning towards giving them the nod as far as to win the coastal kind of ballot over there. So I think they'll be the ones facing Clemson in the championship game. So who who are you saying is going to uh, face Clemson in the championship game? I think Virginia Tech will. A lot of people over on YouTube are saying the exact same thing. They think that Virginia is on the downslope, not beating teams by a big amount. Think about right. it this way, though, if. If uh, Pittsburgh ends up like in a tiebreaker against Virginia, it all goes back to that one loss at the very beginning of the season mm -hmm. to Virginia. Yeah. Man, what a heartbreaker to go back and say, we screwed up on the very first game of the year or we would be in the championship game. That, that would be kind of uh, frustrating, I'm sure, for, for those uh, Pittsburgh guys out there. 